okay, so Orientator says, is WordPress dead? Uh, I don't think it's dead. I think what's happening right now is it's just an evolution. If you remember when WordPress first started, it was a blog engine. And I remember when I started building websites with WordPress, people told me, uh, this is, you know, this is like a toy. It's for, it's a blog. It's for, it's for blogs. Like, it's for blogs. Like, you know, like it's bad. It's for blogs. But now we got professional WordPress today. And we went from a blog engine to a CMS with a lot of bugs. And, you know, it wasn't really working the way it was supposed to. But, you know, eventually we moved from this phase to a phase where themes were kings. For example, Theme Forest. I think they made a lot of money in the early days just with WordPress themes. And if you look at my channel, I don't really talk about themes because, you know, themes, it's not that themes are dead, but with themes like Astra, what else do you need? And now that we have tools like Elementor Pro and, you know, other builders, when you have a theme builder, of course, the need of a theme is not as important as before. But in my opinion, you still need a theme that doesn't get in the way. You need a lightweight theme with the right options when you need it. And that's why I love Astra. I love Astra because I can activate and deactivate the parts that I don't want. I don't get all the bloat. There's already enough bloat in all the plugins we, we get. So basically, we went from this blog engine evolution to WordPress themes. And then from WordPress themes to page builders like Divi. You know, initially, I first started with Divi and I have nothing bad to say about Divi. It's just by the time I started um, needing to get the theme builder features, well, Divi didn't have it. So that's why I actually moved to Elementor at this time and Elementor was still in, in its infancy. But there were some promises about the theme builder features. And, you know, once I moved there, then it took some time for Divi to catch up. But I know Divi has a great community. Divi is a great tool and now they have the theme builder, but yeah, I was already used to Elementor, Elementor Pro, and they started rolling the features as I needed for my projects. So we went from the page builders to the theme builders. And now uh, because of Gutenberg and everything that goes with it, we're kind of moving to a different phase where people want to get rid of the bloat. So getting rid of the bloat can mean moving away from uh, WordPress and, and maybe that's why you asked me if WordPress is dead. So first of all, I don't know anything about the future, but if I had to bet, I would bet that WordPress is still going to be here for a while because when you look at the competition like Webflow and some other tools, there are great tools, but when you, when you look at the market share, WordPress has a giant part of the pie. So I don't think WordPress is going to die like instantly, but what could happen is if another tool came up and disrupted the industry, just like WordPress did, 15 some 15 plus years ago then wordpress could be in danger but the thing is today with all the plugins all the themes all the ecosystem around wordpress it's going to be very hard for a professional to move away from wordpress just like that if i take my own example i really built an ecosystem of tools that i use so i got wordpress elementor pro i built my own templates i built my own tools and for me to just switch to any other theme builder or any other tool any other platform, it would really change everything in my workflow. So nowadays I can craft a professional custom-made WordPress website in a few days. When I say in a few days, the type of website that used to take me three or four weeks, now I can do it in three or four days. Now, of course, I never get three or four days where I can totally work on a website. So I'm going to just do it in the span of two, three weeks. But before it would be months because I just don't have the time. But still, I'm going much faster. So if I had all the time in the world and I could study in the morning, I didn't have to care about my phone, all the, the hundreds of emails I get every week, all the kind of stuff and the ongoing business, then yeah, I could just in two or three days get a fully custom professional website built from scratch where I do the design, the mood boarding, everything. So for me to move away from WordPress, it really needs to be something that's going to make me go even faster or it needs to bring something on the table. Now for the non-professionals, yeah, they can move away easily because they did not invest in tools. They did not refine their workflow. But in my case, that's not going to be possible. Now, I'm not married with WordPress. So if something better comes tomorrow and it can really help my business, my clients, and if it's a win-win situation, of course, I'm going to look at it because... In this type of industry and in the whole world, actually, if you don't move on, 
you're just gonna die <laughs> when i say die i'm talking about economically when my grandmother was on this earth there was a job you know in french it's called laitier so it's people who just bring the milk you know so they, they came with a truck and they would deliver the milk each and every day where are those people at now so just imagine if you had that type of job and you're like no i just, i want to keep this type of job whatever happens i'm going to keep doing that well you would do that but you know at one point you you be living in the street so you need to adapt and when it comes to the web design industry it's even more true because it changes so fast but what i don't do though is as soon as there's a new shiny tool i'm just i'm not going to jump ship because you know this is a waste of time first of all i want to see that the product is mature i want to see that the market picks it because even if you have a much better tool but the market doesn't pick it up it's not going to work out so you need to, really need to see is the, the market adopting this tool like when elementor started i remember when i first thought of elementor it was really in its in its infancy it was really at the beginning and like nobody wanted to even install it and then in one go boom and today they got like 10 million uh copies installed so the tool is not perfect but it's really robust depending on how you use it i know that some people don't like because it's bloated that kind of stuff but it's like any tool especially when a company grows it can be harder to get exactly what you want but personally i like what they're doing uh of course it can always be better but you know having built myself some tool i know how hard it is to actually try to make everybody happy but like i said and it's the same thing for wordpress a lot of people you know are not happy with the direction wordpress is going but it's hard it's hard. The, the best thing we can do is try to have a conversation with those companies. And we live in a time where you can just hop on to right here on YouTube. You know, in the videos, you can try to start a conversation with those companies. So I'm not looking for the perfect tool. I don't care about that. I'm looking for the tool that can help me do what I want. Because basically, if I got, if I got all the options, I can decide if it's going to be bloated or not. If I have the right tools and if I know how to optimize and how to use it. So that's really how it works. And if if, if I can give you uh, an image, because I like uh, filmmaking, I love filmmaking, actually. The filmmaking niche on YouTube is divided in <laughs> two sides. Well, more than two sides, but let's make it simple. Two sides. People who are pixel peeping and they, all, they always want the best and the latest and they're gonna zoom in 5,000 times to see if there's one bad thing about the image and then you get some people that can work with a camera from from 2015 and build masterpieces why why well simply because they know they can use any tool they have the vision of a filmmaker so you know when you look at the first cameras like years and years ago they were ridiculous they didn't even have the power that we have in our smartphones today but those people managed to create some iconic movies so in the same way you can pick whatever theme builder whatever theme whatever system and you can build a beautiful website the end client is not going to care what you're using but i still believe that nowadays the best offer on the market is wordpress especially because you can get started for free even though when you get professional it quickly starts to add up but if you use the right ecosystem and i created a few videos where i'm trying to show you what is the right ecosystem in my opinion then if you do that it's it's really gonna change first of all the way you see web design change your perspective and you're gonna become a better web designer web developer in my opinion so karipa says wordpress is the most popular cms and yes indeed it's it's the most popular one like i said especially when you talk to pure developers they're gonna look at you like wordpress you know they're gonna look at you like you have a rare disease and that's contagious and you know and i don't like that attitude to you know and one of my good friends is a developer we laugh about that but i don't like that attitude because it's not about the purity of your code it's not about you know, if you're using the most pure CMS, clients don't care about that in the real world. They don't care. They want a nice website and they want to make some money. So one thing I was caught up in when, when I was getting started, I used to see my websites as a piece of my own art. You know, I'm a creative person and I was always trying to build the nicest looking website and I still do. But the way I see things has changed because the clients 
of course they want a nice website and they're going to be happy if they have a nice website but they're going to be happier if they make money back if they sell if they gain credibility if they sign more contracts that's why they're going to be happy with you if they just have a beautiful website but it doesn't bring them any return on investment then the next time they're going to pass on your services because they didn't hire an artist they hired someone that can help them get a return on investment and that's crucial once you understand this thing your mentality is really going to change it's going to be a shift where of course you're going to try to build a nice website i'm still trying to build the nicest looking websites i can but i always think okay what does the client want here of course everybody wants more money but what's going to be a win situation for them if they make this amount of money if they sign these many contracts if they get more leads this month so that's really going to be the focus and that's where you're going to understand that design is a language just like english is a language french italian whatever whatever language you speak design is a language so once you understand that let's say you're going to build a website for a car dealer and you're going to ask them okay what's the average amount that people are going to spend in your car dealership and then you start to understand okay if people spend 30 grants you know on average in this car dealership then i really need to deliver something that gives credibility to such an amount and you're going to start creating the design just like you're using a language so if i'm trying to sell something really expensive to someone i'm going to pay attention to the way i speak you know the way i speak should not be slang it's going to be really classy if i'm just going to sell something for two dollars or something i'm not really of course i'm going to try to speak nicely but i'm not really going to put the same effort and focus on my language it's the same thing for design even if people are not specialists in design they know they can feel if it's high end or not and if you want to know what i'm talking about just go to the louis vuitton website and then go to the mcdonald's website just try to experience it and see how you feel what is the perception you have they are not talking to the same market to the same segments of those markets so it's going to be different and the way you design things the colors that you're going to use the shapes the spacing all of that is a design language that you can learn you don't need to imagine it yourself of course you can learn it and now in the year we're in, in in the digital era you can learn most of that for free now of course you can go to college and study for years but you know there's a shorter route you can really learn it for free or you can pay online schools like i talked about team treehouse i think they have something about design also there are other tools and services but you can start for free and as you start making some money with your projects then you can start learning you know maybe a, a more organized way because learning online for free is great but there's a bit of information here a bit of information there the teachers are different and maybe they don't teach you the building blocks the way it should be taught well, it's not about free and paid but to be honest if someone is going to get paid they're going to put more effort they're going to polish their courses they're going to polish what they're trying to teach you because you know they're making a living out of it and they want to keep making a living out of it 